episode, our goal is going to be to wire in an output and an input into our PLC Next in order to demonstrate how they work and then program them in PLC Next Engineer. So on the right hand side, what we've got is an Allen Bradley push button. And here we have a normally open contact, which is going to close as I push down on the button, you can see the mechanism in front of you. And on the other side, we've got an LED, which is currently housed inside of the button, that's going to light up when the output of the PLC next is energized. And as I've mentioned, we're going to write a basic ladder logic program that's going to activate the output based on the press of the push button. So one thing you may have noticed, based on looking at the kit is that it comes with pre-populated push buttons they are wired in through the bottom of the kit and they come into the four connections that you see here once they are pressed you'll notice that there's going to be leds that come on on the input side and we should expect the exact same functionality in our push button so the way we need to connect this is that we need to send a positive signal through the push button in order to activate the input. So I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver that you can see here in order to land this cable into the red terminal on the left hand side of my kit. So those terminals have been pre-populated by Phoenix contact and make it easy to connect said push button. On the other side, the wire that's coming out from the push button, I'm going to land that on the next available input by pushing in a wire into the slot at the same time as I'm pushing in the screwdriver to activate the terminal. In the last shot, we've used a screwdriver to push in one of these terminals. And it's important to emphasize that Phoenix Contact has integrated push-in terminal technology into these PLC Next kits as well as all the I.O. So all you really need to do is push this in by hand and that will securely connect to the PLC. As you'll notice, I can tug very hard on this wire. It's not going to come out. It will require a screwdriver or any other tool to release, but this makes it very easy to install in the field. So all you need to do is put the wire in and then press in with your finger, which is enough to crimp onto that wire. So it saves a lot of time during the installation process. And if you need to rewire or move any of the cables. So what you'll notice is that when I press the push button, there's going to be an LED that's going to activate on my terminal, just as I would expect and just as we saw with all the other push buttons. Now, of course, we can wire in the output that's going to activate the LED. That being said, since we don't have anything programmed, we shouldn't expect it to come on in any way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to land this on the highest terminal in our output side and so that's going to be output number zero and on the other side we're going to have to wire this in to the negative side of the terminal so what i'm doing here is i'm going to land this cable into the blue side of the plc next starter kit similarly pressing in the terminal driving in the wire and as you can see it is landed here it is important to respect the terminal polarity so on the plus side which is going to be coming out from my output card i'm going to land that on the positive side and on the negative side is what i've got on the blue terminal so let's go back to plc next engineer and see how we need we need to program this before we can start writing to the input and output modules, we need to add them to our IO tree under the project under the PLC. So I had mentioned this is going to be residing on the axial line F. If we can double click this menu, we're going to get a new window, which is going to allow us to define what is in every slot. So in the top left hand side, what we've got is a digital output module. So that's going to be under network, axial control, devices, Phoenix contact. And under AXLSE, based on the part number, and as I mentioned, this is going to be a digital output card, so we can expand that. And the specific part number in the PLC Next Starter Kit is going to be the DO16 slash 1 rev. We can drag this out into our device configuration into slot number 1. The next module is going to be the digital input card. So we can once again expand digital inputs, select the right module, which is going to be the second one, drag this out into slot number two, followed by a placeholder. So the placeholder is going to be under system AXL SC, SC-A. We're going to drag that out in slot number three. 
And last but not least, we've got an analog input card of four channels on the voltage side. So this is going to be the second module on the list. We're going to drag that out into slot number four. Now, before we can use any of the variables in our logic, what we need to do is define them under our program. So I'm going to re-expand what we've looked at in the last video and find the maintenance main, right click and then go to type. Here under the variables tab, make sure that in the past we've looked at the code, we didn't look at the variables, select variables. And under the variables, you can define what's going to be tied into our input and output ports as well as the PLC specific variables. So I'm going to start by defining a new one that's going to be called push button one. So push button one. That's going to be of type Boolean. The usage must be external because that's how we're going to tie in to the digital input slot. So that's going to be external type Boolean. And then the second one is going to be LED one. So I'm going to select LED one Boolean external. Once again, very important because a local variable is going to reside within the PLC. It is important to mention that there are several ways in which you can create variables of different scope in PLC Next Engineer. And just like in any other PLC programming languages, you can create what's called a program scope variable and a global scope variable that's going to be accessible by all programs. So what we've done in the previous segment is we've created a variable set that's residing on the main. So what we've selected is the main and then navigated to variables. Alternatively, what you can do is go into your PLC controls and then navigate into the data list. And here you can view all the variables that are going to be tied to your process data. But also if you scroll all the way down, you can add new variables. So here what I can do is enter a new variable name. So my PLC var one as an example and press enter. So that's going to be a new PLC scope variable that then can be accessed by different programs, while the one in main can only be accessed by the program that's going to be written for this main. And we're going to get into this in a more advanced lecture, but I just want you to know that there's going to be differences between how you declare variables, which programs are going to be able to access those variables, and also which other components of your PLC are going to require which permissions in order to require to access either program scope or PLC scope variables. And so once we have both of those defined, what we can do is navigate to the input and output cards that are specific to those variables. So the first one being the digital output, I'm going to double click on the module and navigate to the data list tab within that module, which is going to allow me to define how those outputs are going to be executed. So as you'll notice, once I go into digital output number one, I have the option of selecting one of the variables because the PLC recognizes that an external variable is going to go here. So what I'm going to select is LED one, which is going to be tied to the output. On the input side, I need to go once again into the data list. And here what I'm going to select is my push button. And notice how if I select the topmost element, this is my entire integer. So I need to select a specific variable inside of a Boolean because push button is of type Boolean as I had defined in my program. Now, what we need to pay attention to is since I already have four push buttons specified in that module, instead of being in slot number one, this is going to be in slot number five. So push button one is going to be defined in input number five. Now we're still not done. We need to go back to main and create the basic program that I keep talking about. So navigate back to the code section. And here we're going to write a very basic program that's going to allow us to turn on the LED once the push button is pressed. And we're going to do that using an XIC as well as an OTE instruction. So I've laid out the first XIC and then an OTE by pressing the buttons up here. You'll notice that there's going to be two errors specified here because the C001 and C002 are placeholders that do not exist. So what I can do is double click on the name and here when my push button is activated. So if I scroll down and find my push button, I want to energize my LED. And you'll notice that as soon as I did that, the error on the bottom has disappeared. Similarly, C002 is going to be replaced by my LED. So LED one, 
like so, and we've gotten rid of all the errors in our code. What we need to do now is right click the PLC and we can either use the shortcut F5 or we can select this write and start project and give it a few seconds to compile the program and load it onto the PLC. What you'll notice is that once the project has successfully completed, as soon as I press down the push button, it's going to turn on the LED. We get an indicator also on the card, but the LED on the push button hardware is definitely getting energized. And of course, this is because of the program that we wrote. The last thing I do want to point out is that a set of function blocks is going to be made available to the programmer. So on the right hand side, you can navigate into the programming tab, expand one of the modules, the most popular of which is going to be the ISC 61131 standard blocks. And here you're going to find comparators, you're going to find your timers, counters, and many other blocks that you will normally expect out of a PLC language. What's also very interesting is that you can create your own function blocks if you desire to modify the code, if you want to create something custom for your system, and thus allowing you to reapply the code a lot more easier as you're scaling your application. So just as an example of a current block, we can drag out a timer on instruction as an example. And this is something that we will cover in a more intricate tutorial down the road, but you can start experimenting with the different functions and then we're going to get into how to create our own in the future.